isolating that proposition. I don't believe that God exists. And then I'm deriving the negation of that. I believe that God exists. And the way I'm doing that is I'm using premise one and premise three as a modus tollens. So I'm saying premise one, I believe that if God existed, then I'd believe that God existed. And then I don't believe that God existed. And then I'm deriving, um, I believe that X exists as, as a modus tollens using the first uh, I can write it out as two arguments, if you like, if that would help. That might be help more clear, because there's two inferences. And I can separate them. So, Wouldn't the modus tollens lead you to um, it's not the case that I believe God exists? Because if you say, I believe that if X existed, I would believe X exists, then you say, I don't believe X exists. Doesn't that take you to X doesn't exist? I don't see it. Um, That's confusing me a little bit. Yeah, but the position, the, the, pre, set the second premise is the position of agnosticism. So they don't just stop at, I don't believe that X, X Wait, exists. Wait, no, no, no. You're, I don't understand how, I don't think you're talking about what I'm talking So, what, okay, well, here, look. First, first, can we just go through this more simple argument? Because this is the one that Darth accepted. I will go back to that, Alex, because I do want to understand that. This is this is Darth's uh, argument that I know he'll accept the formalization. If God exists, you know it. It's not the case that you know it. Therefore, it's not the case that God exists. Obviously, he thinks yeah. P two is false. He thinks P one is true. But he thinks this is all valid and this would follow. So, this argument here, if the contradiction that it's supposed to give you is that um, you know he uh, you you your state you're claiming this is what he says. The contradiction is that you're claiming that uh, you know it and you don't know it, right? Then the conclusion the conclusion here, like if he's starting the first proposition that's supposed to be in the contradiction is like, I don't know if God exists or not, right? If the conclusion of this argument is just a statement of fact about whether he exists or not, that's not gonna form a contradiction with the thing that he's trying to make it form a contradiction with. Because the conclusion there is just a statement about like just reality, does he exist or not, right? The uh, thing that he thinks it's forming a contradiction with is a statement about your beliefs. Like, there's no way that this proposition, it's not the case that God exists, that's not going to be the the negation of that. The proposition that that's the negation of is it's the case that God exists. It, the, it's not, like, if you have some other proposition, like, I'm not sure whether God exists or not, the negation of that proposition isn't it's not the case that God exists. So like if there's another way to formulate it, like I, I'm into exploring that, but this argument that he signs off on and that, you know, he's used, like this just, I don't see how this can get you to a contradiction. The conclusion is just that yeah, God so doesn't there, exist. It's supposed to form a contradiction with this proposition about your beliefs. They're just not P and not P. Yeah, so that's, I mean, the argument you've put isn't the argument he's trying to isolate. Um, I know you say that he's like, signed off on that being his argument or whatever but um one of the reasons that can't be his argument is that it doesn't have um agnosticism as a premise right whereas his argument clearly requires it, it his argument is the one that you run when somebody says that they're agnostic right and then he says aha so you can just chalk that up as premise one right because that's when this argument kicks in so if you say that you're agnostic then he says that's impossible and then the argument follows but your argument requires that you're just saying well um you just say i you just run the way i did it and say well i i just know that he doesn't exist then because it follows logically from my lack of belief right so i'm not I, agnostic I i'm atheist so I, you can get out of it without contradicting him but you can't also be an agnostic and take that route well i i so, mean i think that's just after you've been exposed to the argument so like this art so first of all i understand that you're saying that there is like a steel man basically and that that it could be put better than this i'm fine with that but this argument right here um the conclusion there i mean i'm i'm sorry if i'm going in circles but the conclusion is just it's not the case that god exists that proposition yeah. does not form a contradiction with the proposition i'm not sure whether god exists or not do we all agree about that yeah Okay, all right. So we understand that this move is bogus. Now, if you so, I'm I'm glad about that. So now you think there's a steel man version, and that's basically what you're giving here. 
Uh, yeah. Okay, so I want to try to understand what you've done well, here. Well, I, I think I think the addend the only addendum right is just he's Darth is just saying if the person keeps the position of agnosticism, no, they're incoherent. No, no, no. He thinks agnosticism itself is incoherent. You're you're doing a yeah, you're doing yeah, a you're yeah, doing a different yeah, you're yeah, doing you're doing yeah, a di but, no you're doing a different move you're saying after you've been exposed to the argument you have to have the belief and then you're contra no he's cl he's claiming yeah, he, I, uses, we he, talking, he uses he uh, uses this right. argument he uses this argument to say no, no, that I, look, look as, you're just as not we were you're just not about, you're just not listening when I'm talking no, I I am man look as we were talking about earlier right I think Darth does a bait and switch right the agnostic originally right presumably has no concepts or meanings towards like what a god is and could be completely non cognitivist about the whole thing right darth when he says the agnostic is being incoherent that is because darth is inserting his definition that a god a god exists and it is believed in right that's why he says that the agnostic is incoherent but that's that's not a position of the, the agnostic right that's that's just on based on his definitions of god so it's definitional in his worldview that the agnostic is incoherent. You're just not talking about the same thing. Like I'm talking about this argument here, right? The for the argument that I put in text, which Darth has used to suggest that all agnostics, like if you're an agnostic, there's a contradiction, right? If you make the move of saying, well, there's going to be a contradiction after you're exposed to the argument, that's not something that applies to all agnostics because they haven't all been exposed to the argument. That's just a different thing you're talking about. This argument alone, right, does not establish that agnostics are contradicting themselves. It just establishes that if there's such thing as an agnostic out there, then it's the case that God doesn't exist. He doesn't get, he can't, that argument, as I've been saying for this entire conversation, as, and as I think now Malpass is agreeing on, just doesn't get you to a contradiction. But apparently there's a better version, so we can try to look at the better version. Well, I think my Steelman is invalid as well, actually. Um, <laughs> okay because destroy i pointed out that it relies on i was i flagged it up a minute ago but for some reason my brain isn't kicking it in but yeah uh it relies on the inference that uh that from you believing if p and q and you believing that not q that it follows logically that you believe that not p but it doesn't that's that's invalid um it would do if if i mean it doesn't, I mean, people have inconsistent beliefs for one thing. So like a model where that inference is invalid is where I just believe the conditional and I believe the negation of the consequent, but I don't believe the negation of the antecedent. I could just be that person. And then that shows that the argument is not valid. I'd be irrational. My beliefs would be self-contradictory, but that doesn't, it, you know, so what, right? People are uh, irrational to some extent. So you can't actually say the argument the way the way that i put it it trades on a, an invalid inference it's the modus tollens in the final bit and Tec destroy is quite right about that T technically it's it's destroyer not destroyer but um no, right <laughs> whatever wrecked, I accidentally wrecked. Said an just word. flee the server alex Damn, you've been destroyed <laughs> done <laughs> um yeah uh, getting cloned all over the place here yeah it's funny <laughs> it makes me laugh when when you have to like leave a debate and then i just see some some message on facebook like got wrecked too hard had to go or like ponage too strong <laughs> <laughs> um yeah okay so do we do we want to spend time on on this one that you've typed up or have you just from troy's comment just come to like you don't you don't even want to get into this now I'm not sure what else there is to say about it. It's invalid. So okay, um, yeah. So well, then, then I guess we're back to like, you know, what what argument could he even deploy to say that agnosticism leads to a contradiction? Because we've been through the formalization that he approves of, the right, which yeah, I, I do want to hold him to that until he says, okay, actually, I don't approve of it. We know that that's not going to work. We've tried. This oh, I other... suppose. Okay. Uh, sorry, I, I've just seen the uh, the way out of this, right? Um, okay because it's not a contradiction in the sense I, I just spelling that out there right the the way that my inference is invalid is if i have contradictory beliefs and to some extent that's darth's goal is just to show that the other guy is is uh irrational so right, that's the whole his goal. claim is it's incoherent yeah he's just saying uh your belief state is incoherent he's not saying a contradiction exists or something right 
but that if these propositions were true, then a contradiction would exist. He's just saying, um, if these contradictions were all true, then you'd be irrational. And I guess that it kind of does follow, I suppose. If you hold that... Um, so what? What basically it's saying, if you believe that um, Darth, Darth's God entails your believing that he exists, right? If you believe that, that that's true. And that's that's neutral. I mean, he can just define my God is the God that if he existed, you'd believe in him, right? Okay, mm-hmm. so I believe that that's, that's Darth's definition, right? So that if that God existed, I believe that that God existed, okay? I, so I believe that that's true. So I believe a conditional, right? And then I'm saying, well, I neither believe nor disbelieve that that God exists, right? That's the statement of agnosticism about that God. Right? Mm-hmm. And then the first conjunct of that statement of agnosticism is that I don't believe that that God existed, uh, mm-hmm. that that God exists, right? And then I can form a little modus tollens. Um, it's invalid, right? But I can form a little modus tollens that says, um, you know, if Darth's God existed, then I'd believe in him. Um, I don't believe that Darth's God exists. And then, like, if straightforward modus tollens, you'd be able to conclude... Um, I do believe that uh, Darth's God doesn't exist. Wait, right? what? Do one second. So the modus tollens. I wrote you... this out. So okay. look, look, I'll show. You. I wrote it exactly as two arguments. So where is it? At, um, well, it's five forty-four for me. Whatever time zone you're in. <laughs> Why are you doing this, Darth? Making us do math over here? I'm not. I've written it out twice in words without yeah, symbols. No, no, I, I am. Do you see what? Uh, no, no. I, by math, I meant calculating the time zones. Um, yeah. Here, I'll post it again <laughs> oh, okay. at the bottom. Sure. Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. So take the first bit. Right. It's just so first inference is just one to two the top. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's the f- premise. One is just the statement of yeah. It's dust. just yeah. Uh, sorry. The statement of agnosticism. Yeah. It's right? just eliminating one half of the statement. Yeah. I got you. Exactly. Right. 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 So I've just isolated that. I don't believe that that X exists. Then mm-hmm. um, the second argument, the first premise is just the statement of Darth's, that's basically Darth's definition, right? I mm-hmm. believe that if X exists, then I would believe that X exists. Um, and then I'm my second premise is just the second premise from above, right? I don't believe that it exists. And now I'm doing a modus tollens, right? I basically got if P then Q, not Q, therefore not P. So I'm I'm a bit confused here. If we say um okay so i believe that if x existed then i would believe x existed i don't believe x existed i guess the reason i'm having trouble with this the modus tollens is just that it's got these like belief words and stuff in there instead of it just being straight like like easy propositions i mean i believe that if x existed then yeah it's like the implication is like in brackets after the after the I believe, that's the, like reading me. I don't really know how to think about logic like that. Well, it's basically um... like I could understand if you if you were to just take this and just <laughs> just remove um, remove that first bit, then I would understand it, right? Uh, wait, then no, but then the conclusion would have to be X doesn't exist, right? Um, that that i can understand but um yeah i i get confused with the belief uh i don't know if it's like an operator or what entering the the logic that kind of weirds me out. i don't know how to process that yeah i'd have to think about it a bit more yeah, I mean, it could just be my limitation with formal logic that the belief thing trips me out. But, I mean, yeah, you have to just try and work out what the counter model would be. Um, like, can it be that the premises are true and the conclusion is false? Um, is that a contradiction? Um, and in that little version that I just typed out there, you know, believe that if P then Q, don't believe Q, therefore don't believe P. Um, you can make the premises true and the conclusion false. Just imagine that you believe the first two things, but not the third one. Would there be a contradiction? There wouldn't be a contradiction. What there would be is just you would have contradictory beliefs. 
Hmm. Um, well, here, look, maybe, maybe Darth can pipe up because he's in here right now. Darth, you, before you said that you liked this formalization where we say, if God exists, then you know he exists. You don't know he exists, therefore he doesn't exist. You're, you like that way of putting it, right? Well, that's your way of formulating it. By the way, I'm very limited in my talk time because I'm working at the moment, but go ahead. That's okay. Well, so you signed off on that before, but is that are you saying you now don't sign off on that? No, I just said I wouldn't express it precisely in that manner. How, how would you express it then? Very, very, very simply. God says you know that he exists, and if you say you don't know that God exists, then you're just psychologically deceiving yourself. Oh, right. So it just it's just God says you believe that he exists and you say you don't believe he exists yeah my ultimate standard for what is true is the mind of god and how he has revealed it we're, we're trying to explore the argument about um how agnosticism entails a contradiction could you lay that one out for us if you have time you don't have to if you're busy don't worry about it yeah if you if you say and i'll just i'll just be very brief if you say i do not know that any god exists then, then the Christian God is specifically design, defined as being revelatory. So if you don't know that any God exists, then it follows from that that the Christian God does not exist. Right, okay, right? Wait, but, but then... Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. So then you, that you then know, if, if you take it to be true that you do not know that any creator God exists, then it would follow from that that the Christian God does not exist and therefore you know that at least one creator god doesn't exist contradicting your agnostic position wait but see the thing that weirds me out there is you are using that modus tollens you're saying if god exists then you know it you don't know it therefore he doesn't exist all that takes you to is he doesn't exist it doesn't take you to you're making a statement that he doesn't exist so i don't see where the contradiction's coming from no you added something that i didn't say i said if you claim that you do not know that any God exists, if that statement is taken to be true, then it would follow from that that the Christian God does not exist because the right. Christian God is defined as being revelatory. Right, but now you want to jump to you know it, right? Because that, you would, all, you would, all that you would argument... Then know, yeah, you would then know that the Christian God does not exist. But you're, you're jumping from the conclusion of the argument, which is that he doesn't exist, to a further proposition that you know that he doesn't exist. Okay. Would you, if, if you do not know that any God exists, would that therefore, uh, would it follow from that, that the Christian God does not exist? Mm -hmm. According to your definition, yeah. No, I'm asking you. If you do not, if you truly do not know that any God exists, then you would know that the Christian God does not exist no. by, what, because what? the definition of the Christian God only wait, wait, wait. The Christian so I, God yeah. is defined as being revelatory. Yeah, so I understand. I understand that here. Make I'll make sure I'm following you. If the Christian God I mean, exists, I mean, then we we've know had it, this right? conversation what ten times already. Yeah, but I think you're wrong, Darth. Tell me how I'm wrong. The reason that I think that you're wrong about this is that your argument concludes that God doesn't exist. It doesn't conclude that you're claiming it. So you have to make a further step and say something like that you uh, have beliefs about all the entailments of your beliefs. And then you can get yeah, to your just Yeah, you, your, your formulation is just really not, not very clear. Okay. Uh, well, do let's you, go through let's this again. Yeah. Uh, if, can I, uh, sorry, what, what's that, Alex? Can I have a go at this? So if God... So God being revelatory means that if that God existed, then you'd know about it, right? Yeah. Right. So from, and then, so if I claim that I don't know about it, right? I mean, it, what's the difference between this, the second premise being I claim that, because I could claim that I don't know about it even when I do, right? So nothing really follows from me claiming that. It's surely the second premise is if I don't know about it, then it follows that that God doesn't exist, right? Because if he did, then I'd know about it. That's how I'm if thinking. If I don't know about, about it, it, then he doesn't exist. Right? Unless... So that seems fairly straightforward. That that's, you know, that's just saying, if P, then Q, not Q, therefore not P. Right? That's really straightforward. So I think we can all agree about that. So you must be saying something more like, 
I, yeah, I really don't get it. What, how does it work if it's not that? Who are you asking? I'm asking you, Dutch. It seems like it's your argument. So God's revelatory. Yeah, well, if you don't know that any God exists, if you do not know that any God exists, then it follows that the Christian God doesn't exist. Sure. Okay. Yeah. If the yeah. But the God, does it the, follow the, that you know existed, that he doesn't you'd exist? You know about it. Yeah. It, exactly. I might not know that. And that's why it's not a contradiction. Right. No, it is a contradiction because if you say, I do not know that any God exists, and mm -hmm. it therefore rules out the existence of the Christian God, then you do know that at no, least you one know, God no, exists. It doesn't. So no, it, it there just are things that can follow logically from what you believe that you don't believe, or things that can follow logically from what you know that you don't know. So, for instance, I know a bunch of maths, right? and there's some unproven mathematical conjecture. Now, that's either true or false, but I don't know it. But it does follow logically from stuff that I do know, because it follows logically from, like, the basic axioms of maths, right? One way or the other. It's just no one's figured that out yet. So that follows logically from stuff I, I know, but I don't know it, right? So it's obvious that there can be, even if you show that something follows logically from things that I know, that doesn't entail that I know that thing. Yes. That's been my point for this whole thing. So, Darth, one, one, can I just say one other thing? Then you can go for as long as you want. So, one other thing I'd say is, I know you think I'm just throwing words at you, but a way to get around that would just to say that you know all the entailments of your beliefs. Then, if one of the entailments of your beliefs is that God doesn't exist, then you can say you know that, because you know all the entailments. But then you have to defend this weird claim that you know all the entailments of your beliefs. If you assert that the Christian God is not known, Okay. Would that be an entailment of agnosticism that the Christian God is not known? I just think that's like agnosticism is basically. Yeah. If if you say you're yeah. An, yeah so I, is I, is your agnosticism does that include and entail that the Christian God is not known to exist? Well, me specifically, I actually think that God's false. But yeah, an agnostic could say, I'm not sure whether the Christian God exists. And it follows by your argument from oh, that, so that, that he so doesn't so exist, right? So now, so now you, you previously told me you hold to the agnostic position. Now you're an atheist? With respect to your God, I'm an atheist, yeah. But I'm just talking about a hypothetical. No, that, that's, a, that's, a, that, that, that's a childish response, okay? Atheism is not the <laughs> disbelief in some gods, okay? Atheism is the disbelief and denial of all gods. Okay. Oh, oh, if atheism means... Yeah, this idea of atheism agree, towards Darth, certain guys, that's agree. ridiculous. Darth, because... I can agree. Darth, I can agree with what... Okay, so if what you're saying, if you're talking about global atheism, I'm not a global atheist. You're right, yeah. No, there's not There's not, There's not. not non-global atheism. Atheism it encompasses all God concepts, not some. You, you because then, be then theists would be atheists. Jew, 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 one second. Jew, wait, Jew, yeah, wait, yeah. stop. If, Let if him the, talk. If that, if that a-hole interjects, I will just leave. Yeah, okay. the, I, I, was actually, I was actually standing up for you there, Darth. So he, it, right now, it's Darth versus, you know, he's got Malpass with his philosophy PhD, and there's Angstreich, okay, and there's I'll me, and there's you. Promise. So yeah, let's let him finish his sentences, because it's one Christian versus, like, 50 atheists. So what were you saying, Darth? Yeah, your position is, I do not know that Christian God exists. Right? So are you asking me your, your position? Malpass? Are you asking me? I'm asking you. Is it your position? Well, my actual... Is it your position? You do not know that Christian God exists. Well, with your God, I think he doesn't exist. So if that's what you want me to say. But that's going to take us away your from Your position is, you do, not, you do not know that Christian God exists. Well, I would say he doesn't exist right? by your definition. That's not what I asked you. I said, is it your position you do not know that the, oh, so now so see I'm see now I'm confused because formally you told me you were in a, you, you held to agnosticism. Yeah, so I think what's the confusion is that you don't want me to divide up agnosticism and atheism by gods, so we're talking past okay. each other. Is it is it your position? that no there is no creator creation distinction shit, shit I have to step away from one sec just talk to Malpass or someone I'll, I'll come back though so Alex if, if somebody says if somebody's position entails I do not know that the Christian God exists then it follows from that the denial of the Christian God's existence 
Um, because the, the Christian God is defined as having made himself known. So, okay, so the first premise is, if that Christian God existed, then I'd know that that Christian God existed. And the second premise is, I don't know that that Christian God exists. Then it follows logically that that Christian God doesn't exist. It doesn't follow logically that I know that he doesn't exist, though. It follows that you, the, when you, the, the, uh, that it entails the denial of the existence of God. It entails that the proposition that that God exists is false, but it doesn't entail that I know yeah. that that proposition is false. Now, what follows, Alex, is that if you claim that you do not know that uh -huh. the Christian God exists, if that statement yeah. is true, I do not know mm -hmm. the Christian God exists, then yeah. it follows from that the so falsity the of the existence exist. of the Christian God. Yeah, that's true. I agree. Okay. So if the Christian right. God is revelatory, then the fact that I don't know that he exists... Now, I agree, I agree with you. So, right. I agree with you. Somebody somebody might not see the con connection and entailment. But it just sounds like an argument. But I'm, I, I'm focusing on the entailment of the position, Alex. Yeah. The entailment of the position is it's just a refutation of Christianity, right? Right. Because right. I don't know that he exists. He doesn't. Yeah. So right. Christianity is false because I don't know that it's true. And it also, agnosticism is also a self-contradiction because it's well, indirectly well, it's not, making it's the claim getting, that... It's not a contradiction in agnosticism. It's a refutation of Christianity based on the fact that I don't believe... No, that the position, true. the position, the agnostic position is a contradiction. No, you think it's a contradiction because you think that what follows is that I don't know that he exists. Right? You, yeah. you're, you're switching if you don't, if you don't know, if you don't know the Christian God exists, then you know by your own position that there's at least one God doesn't exist. No, you don't. It doesn't follow logically that you know that there's one God that doesn't exist. It follows logically that there is. Of course, one God it that does. Of Listen, course it does, it, Alex. No, it, doesn't. it most it certainly does. If you exist. do not, if I say I do not know that this God who has made himself known exists, then that, then if it is true that you do not know that, then that God doesn't exist. Yeah, I agree. But it's not, it doesn't further follow that I know that that God doesn't exist. That's the it, step it, that I'm it, saying. Well, only, possible. only, only if you're an idiot and you don't, if you're not cognizant of the entailment. Well, okay, but there are idiots, aren't there? So it, you know, it doesn't. That, that's not the point. Primacy. The point is, I'm looking at the entailment of agnosticism. I'm not no, going to focus on somebody's poor reasoning. No, the entailment of the position. It doesn't matter to me that somebody doesn't connect the dots, Alex. Well, um, but can you're I, saying, I, sorry, that what, sorry just one, one. They do connect the dots. Just, if they did connect the dots, then what you're saying would follow logically. The agnostic position entails a contradiction, whether right, they're cognizant always, of that listen, or not. People don't always believe the things that are logically that are the logical consequences of their beliefs, right? And that stops your argument from going through. That no, stops what it being I, what, a yeah, again, in agnosticism. The, the, the agnostic position is a contradiction, but not only on that terms, but also on the terms that it is making a claim that it is not making a claim about ultimate reality. Look, okay, I'm not so making a declaration they, about ultimate reality. Uh, can I ask Alex? And they are. Can I, can I ask wait, wait, Alex? One, we can just clear yeah, right. you got to make it fast because I, yeah, I have to go in one I minute. Can. Right, so look, I'm saying that the argument doesn't follow logically, just straightforwardly, because there are people who don't understand the, the implications of their beliefs. Right, but now let's think of someone who does understand the implications of their beliefs, right, who gets it and says, oh, the God who... If he existed, I'd believe that he exists, right? I don't believe he exists, therefore he doesn't exist. They're going to go, and I believe he doesn't exist, right? So if they started off being agnostic, they would understand that it's, you know, they'd update their belief and they'd say, All right, gee, I guess I'm not agnostic about that guy. Right? Yeah, I, I don't I actively am an atheist about that. And, and I have to pipe in that that's when Darth says, Darth, when you think that my position has changed, that's why that's the change that I've made. And can I just say one or two things to Alex for a second? So, Alex, you, you'd agree. Yeah, that's OK. You, I, have, you, I have to run an error. I'll be back in a little while. OK, um, so, Alex, you'd you'd agree, of course, that if we were to say that this further proposition is true, that you uh believe everything that's entailed by your beliefs then we can get to a contradiction right so if, we, uh, if yeah then you yeah, get if, to the, 
Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. then if, if if the the modus tollens that leads you to God doesn't exist, uh, if you if that's an entailment of your view and you know all and believe all the entailments of your view, well then it follows that you believe that he doesn't exist, and now you're going to get a contradiction. It is and isn't the case that I believe he doesn't exist. Well, it, you get that you believe that he exists and you believe that he doesn't exist. So it's not that there is a contradiction. It's that um, you have internally inconsistent beliefs, right? But that's fine. That's not the same thing as there being a contradiction. Sorry, I, right? I, I, just, I just meant that you believe a contradiction. I should have been yeah, clear about right, that. Right, yeah, right, right, right. That's right. Yeah. Th that's what would follow from it. So, what yes. would it, so this is, um, so there's two senses of an ad hominem. There's actually a couple of senses of ad hominem in like informal logic right one of them is where the one everybody knows where you just insult someone instead of like attacking the argument or whatever but there's another one which is a, it's a strategy of showing that the person making the argument is inconsistent is internally inconsistent right and this is a classic ad hominem in that sense so it's like saying those the things that you've listed as your beliefs um are are in turn are contradictory right your beliefs are contradictory so, and that's that's what's going on in this argument. But it's not the same as deriving a contradiction straightforwardly, because everyone has in, c inconsistent beliefs in some way or another, right? We're all nobody has perfectly consistent beliefs, and also no one is perfectly aware of the implications of their beliefs either. So, you know, the, that you know, there's two things there that are, you know, it doesn't matter that much well, if you uh, show that someone's uh, got internally inconsistent uh, beliefs, right? It's not the end of the world. Wait, there might be a contradiction contradiction here. So if you look at that argument <laughs> I, I, I just gave, <laughs> um, if, if God exists, you know it. It's not the case that you know it. Therefore, it's not the case that God exists. We add a further proposition that you know all the entailments of your beliefs. Um, so this proposition, we're saying it's true that it's not the case that you know it. Uh, and we get to this conclusion, God doesn't exist. But if we say you know that entailment, right, then there actually is a real contradiction. It's not just a contradiction oh, well, of beliefs. It's the case that you know it, and it's not the case that you know it. Wait. Yeah, I think that gives you a contradiction contradiction. I think that by him adding in, a, this is what I've been saying this entire time, he equivocates to get to the contradiction, and he could actually make it give him a real contradiction by adding in a proposition that you know all the entailments of your beliefs. And that would give you a, co a contradiction contradiction. Premise two would be, that that would be true and its negation would be true. That's not just a contradiction. No, no, no. What, what yeah. would be true is that you'd know that um, it's not the case that God exists. And mm -hmm. that would be internally contradictory with premise two. Wait, but if we with... say... Wait, but one sec, Alex, just you correct me if I'm wrong, but if premise two, if we're actually saying it's true that it's not the case that you know it, and then we get to uh, you knowing it, that would actually make that proposition false. We'd be saying that proposition is true and false. Is that right? I think so. I can. I no, can try. No, I can. I don't. I don't. Why, think that's why, wait. You just. Saying, you just wait a second. You wait. It's... Stop. You. Sorry. You just. You tend to go off topic. I want to just hammer this down with Alex. So look, if we say if God exists, you know it. Premise two is the important one here because this is the one that's going to get contradiction. It's not the case that you know it. Therefore, it's not the case that God exists. Now we make a, a further argument, right? We say it's also the case that you know all the entailments uh, um, of of the things you believe, right? So. If if this last conclusion here that God uh, it's not the case that God exists if that is something that you know now then that actually means P two is false right but P two was affirmed as true so I think that actually gives us a contradiction. Hmm. Uh, yeah, there's a contradiction if it's affirmed that you know of it. I believe all the and, and sorry, I really didn't mean to be mean, Jew. If you want to say your thing now, that's fine. I just I could tell you were on a bit of a different track. But sorry, what, sorry for being mean. What did you want to say? No, it, it's okay. Like I was going to point out that like you seem to be sort of delving towards like an omnipotent sort of state of affairs, right? But at the point of knowing all the entailments to all your beliefs, how do you have a position like agnosticism? Yeah, it would be a con you'd get a contradiction if you know all the entailments, and one of the entailments is that you know he exists, and we previously affirmed a proposition that it's not the case you know he exists. You get a contradiction, right? But I think that's just saying something like the being that knows all you know the entailments to all things, um, who claims to be an agnostic, who has well, no, it's not claims, right? Who it does. It doesn't need to be all things either. It can just be of the things you believe, right? 
you don't have to know the entailments of things you don't know about on that view. Like the point is just. I don't know if that's possible. Look, look, right? look the, 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 the point. The, 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 the only the only point is just that he could actually make this argument yield a real contradiction if he wanted to make this further claim that you know all the entailments of your beliefs. But that would just be like a really crazy claim to make for the kind of reasons Alex spelled it, out, right? You could know things it. about math and not know. Imagine knowing all the entailments that you that you can get out of like knowing what the basic mathematical operators do and stuff. You don't have all that knowledge. It's like a toothless argument because if to say you know all the entailments is to I think be tantamount to saying and they're omni or omniscient. Right. Yeah. So sorry, Isaac. I've just had a chance to sit and think about this for a second. Okay. So I wrote we wrote that out right. I just had. I think the principle you wanted to appeal to is that you know all the you know everything that follows from what you know. But the problem with your previous argument was that the only bit that you, the only bit you've explicitly stated that, that you know is the consequent, the content of the consequent. And the second premise is just something that you don't know. So it doesn't actually, you know, oh. it's the conclusion is something that logically follows from a conditional, which you didn't say that we know and a, a second premise which is just something that i don't know so it you, it doesn't follow that you know the conclusion if you just tag on by the way everything that follows from stuff i know i know that as well it, well, th it would you'd have to say that you know both the premises yeah like that's what you, that's what i was trying to say though if i know that if god exists then i'd know it and i know that it's not the case that i know it um then um i would know that it's not the case that god exists so all, all and, sorry and then it looks like you're saying basically it looks like the sec the conclusion knowing that it's not the case that god exists and knowing that it's not the case that i know that god exists this is still not quite well, a contradiction it, but it's very close isn't it isn't the problem with the first premise that it's based on uh the uh it's based on a claim made by the in the Christian God the it's it's in virtue of that claim that you know I exist. Isn't that a problem with the whole premise in the first place? Uh, the first premise. Okay. Yeah, if God exists, you if God exists, you know it. Isn't that based on the uh, a mm -hmm. claim uh, itself uh, of the God? You know, he said that God has made Himself known, so you know it. Yeah, but that's to get into that is just going to be a big theology debate. Like he can just define God like that, and we can work with it. Um, okay. Yeah, because you can just say that's a definition, right? And it's still open to whether or not there is anything that answers to that definition. So let's just say... This seems like a weird a premise. Yeah, it is a weird premise, but I'm just trying to work out what the like consequences would be. Um, I mean, it's not quite so weird. I mean, if... Imagine there was something which had the property of, like... Um, immediately killing me if it, if I, if it existed in the same universe as me. Right, some like hunter robot thing that's like perfectly good at immediately killing me, Grim Reaper or whatever. Um, well, I exist, right? So I know that there isn't some crazy hardcore Grim Reaper thing in my universe. Otherwise, he would have killed me straight away, right? So it's something like that. It's like you can just think of a thing that has some property that's excluded by some property that you know that you have, right? And here we're just saying, imagine there was this thing called a, a god whatever that is doesn't matter right and just say the only thing we say about it is that um if it existed then i'd have a certain mental state right like i'd have this mental state of knowing that god existed um and because i lack that mental state then we know that whatever that thing is with that property there just can't be one of those so i mean you, well, i think yeah. the way to think about it is just to decontextualize it from the theological context like it doesn't really matter that it's something to do with calvinism or whatever you could just think of like anything playing that role and then just sort of plug in uh, the variables again. Think about it like that. So, and it's not, you know, it's not trivial. I think it's quite interesting, actually. So there's there's one or two things. So like the first is I, I'm still I don't I mean, if I'm wrong and I'm making a fool of myself, then so be it. But I swear you're not right about this. Alex. <laughs> I, I swear to God, this can give you an actual contradiction, because look, if we if if we and then there's another point I want to make after. Um, in fact, I'll make that point first. Does, do you, Jack and Alex both see now what I was talking about with the equivocation? Because he clearly equivocates between it being the case that God doesn't exist and you knowing it to get to the contradiction. Didn't everyone see him equivocating like that? Yes. 
Yeah, I think I spelled it out to him fairly clearly. Yeah, you did better than me. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so... Yeah, yeah, I, sorry, yeah, I, 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 I did. Yeah, very good. Yeah, so I, I knew that that's a thing he does. Um, and then I just want to return to this point about the contradiction. Um, so, uh, Alex, let's say this argument is, is true, right? Let's just say that P1 and P2 are true. Um, now, you, to get, obviously... If it's the case that you know the conclusion, then P2 is false. We can agree about that, right? If you know the conclusion, P2 is false. In the argument here, I'll, I'll paste it again in um, in a general, just so we're all looking at the same thing. If you know the conclusion, then P2 is false. We can all, we can agree about that? Um... So the conclusion is it's not the case that God exists. If you know the conclusion, you know it's not the case that he exists, then P2, it's not the case that you know it, is false. Jack, if I knew the conclusion, yeah, 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 you're right. You're right, you're right. I, I can also see Jack is lit up, but your your mic isn't coming through if you're trying to say something. Oh, no, that was an accident. Oh, okay, you're just making your name shine for us. Okay, um, so yes, if if you know the so conclusion, you're, you're right about that, right? What, right? All I was saying was that um, if you wanted yeah. to have a, a, I, appendix, I, 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 appendix, I follow. Premise. I follow you actually. You're distinguishing between okay. the premises being true and you knowing that they're true, right? So, because the problem is just how I formulated the thing about you knowing the the entailments, right? It's just if if we get to a case where, in fact, let let me think of how to how to spell this out a bit better. Um, just give me two seconds. <clears throat> right, so the conclusion, the conclusion follows from those two premises. So it's, it's an entailment of those two premises. So if you know those two premises, then you know the conclusion. If we accept this separate proposition that you know the entailments of all your views. Can, do we agree about that? Wait, hold on. Hold yeah, on. if you know if if you know the entailments of all your views, right, and you know P one and you know P two, then you know C. And you uh, knowing yeah. C, yep, and you knowing C as we described before makes P two false, so it does lead to a contradiction. Wait, 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 wait. Swear to God, this <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> uh, look, look. So you see that, that those three propositions, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's a bit different, but but I know you're doing that on purpose, yeah. Those are wait a minute, hold on. Did you say you swear to who? Right? Wait, 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 Tim. Let Alex talk, please. You can you can talk after. Sorry, go on, Alex. Premise th three there is what you were saying is contra contradicts premise two, right? I've written in the first person. Let me write it out. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put the argument like that. But yeah, if if you know C, which is your P three there, yeah, you know that God exists or that He does. Yeah, it's it's gonna uh, that'll contradict with P two. Yeah. Right, but the problem is that um, all I've done is strengthen your conclusion by adding uh, you know that in front of it. Um, and while it contradicts premise two, it doesn't follow from those two premises. I, I agree. I agree. I, that's why I'm what saying... What you've got to do is try and find a way of making, uh, adding something else in mm -hmm. that's, that gets you to that conclusion. That's what I'm trying to do. And, yeah. and your suggestion was, well, if I know everything that follows from the other things that I know, and then that would get the conclusion. That, that and conclusion, that, wait, right? that, that and that you know P1 and P2. And okay, so let's let's run that then. So you're yeah. saying that, right? So right. This is what I was doing just two seconds ago. So, so we're saying because if if you know if you know the entailments of everything you believe, or you believe the entailments of everything you believe, that's probably how we have to say it. Then, um, if if you believe P one and P two, then it's entailed that you believe C, and if that's the case, then P two is false. But P2 was supposed to be true. So we get a contradiction that P2 is true and false. If there is some like obvious reason this doesn't make sense that's about to become clear when he writes it out, I will uh, I will shame myself.
Okay, so I think that's the argument. You oh, want okay, it's going to be... One second, let me think about this. I know that if God exists, you know that God exists. I know that it's not the case. Oh, X, if I know X and Delta. Sorry, I've written it first again. You clean know it's the case that God doesn't exist. Um, yeah, you know... I, th I okay the just for some reason the the knowing op operators and stuff weird me out a bit but I'm virtually certain this is what I'm saying yeah And then you want to say something like, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't mean to be repetitive, but it's just like, if we take the argument, like as I typed it, which forgive me for using how I typed it. It's just, it, it's just easy for me to think about it that way. And if we also say that you, you believe all the entailments of your beliefs and we say that P1 and P2 are beliefs, then you also believe C. And if you believe C, then P2 is false. Yeah, uh, Troy, Malpass is asking for your opinion in text. I mean, or Jack, if you have anything also to offer. Sorry, let me take a look. Yeah, so if you look in general at the one that I just posted, Jack, so... This is like Darth's kind of thing he was doing, right? If God exists, you know it. It's not the case that you know it. Therefore, it's not the case that God exists. That's just a straightforward modus tollens. So I'm just, I'm making, this is kind of tangential, but I'm just making a point about how he could get to an actual contradiction instead of just equivocating, uh, right? So how he could get to an actual contradiction is by saying that you know all the entailments of your beliefs and that P1 and P2 are beliefs you have. Because then an entailment of p1 and p2 is c so if you uh believe p1 and p2 then it's also the case that you believe c but if it's the case that you believe c then p2 is actually false so we get p2 being true and false yeah that seems like that would work but um he's disavowed that strategy oh oh yeah he this is he would not do that and f for the obvious reason probably like <laughs> that i mean I, who knows why darth won't get on board with certain strategies but the obvious problem that stands out to me about that strategy is it relies on this insane claim that you know all the entailments of your beliefs <laughs> like that's just well, crazy be, yeah well to be fair to darth that's probably why he disavowed that strategy because he realized what a crazy thing to say that but if he doesn't make that move or s some other move I'm not aware of, then he can't get to the contradiction without equivocating. Because all that argument leads to is it's not the case that God exists. doesn't follow that you know it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Are we still disagreeing, Alex? Or are you, are you joining Team Isaac? Um, I'm... Are you agnostic about Team Isaac? I'm, I'm just trying. To, I'm. I'm just trying to get my head around. It feels right. Um, oh, Troy's trying to pipe up. You. You. You wanted his opinion, right, Alex? What are you saying, Troy? I just had another question because it seemed that you had agreed earlier that even without sort of deductive omniscience, omniscience that the um, agnostic who is aware of this argument has inconsistent beliefs. Is that, is that something that either of you had agreed on? Because that seems wrong to me. Are you asking me or are you asking Alex? I think Alex, because he had mentioned this earlier. But... Okay. I think um, that seemed right earlier on that uh, that if you have deductive omniscience, so that means that if you believe everything that follows from what you believe, um, Right, and you had but, some but, set of those premises earlier. Then it would mean because you could just derive. So it was, it was like the situation was: you believe if P and then Q, and you believe not Q, um, but you don't believe not P. You believe P, right? And then I'm saying, well, that means you, that person has logically inconsistent beliefs, right? The person with, uh, um deductive omniscience because he also believes um 
the the result of the modus tollens, right? So he also believes not P. Right. So he, that person but I was, uh, has inconsistent. I was asking P. about the, the the agnostic that does have deductive emissions. Just the one that believes that he tells Q and, and believes uh, not uh, not Q. I, well, he has not inconsistent. Well, he it depends what you mean, I guess. Yeah, his his beliefs are. Um, but he doesn't have to look, beliefs, I just but, mean belief P and belief not P. Yeah, I guess in that sense he doesn't believe a contradiction, but he believes a set right. of propositions which um, entail a contradiction. Well, yes. Well, hang on. What, where, where does the contradiction entail? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. If, if they believe that they don't... Um, uh, whatever the other... If he believes if P and Q, and he believes not Q, and he also believes P, right? Although you haven't, he hasn't drawn the final step out. Um, Wait, it's still the case P. that those propositions are logically inconsistent, right? I thought, wait, 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 he doesn't believe P, right? I thought P was the proposition God exists. I think in the example from above, I mean, I can scroll back up, but look, I'll write it out. I, I think it was that he believes all right, all right. if P, then Q, and he believes not Q. Then he believes no. not, well. And he believes P. Right, so he has... Well. I've just typed where's, out those. Where's belief? Yeah, but where's belief P coming in? Because I thought, I thought in the original argument, belief P would just mean that he believes that God exists, but that's not right. Yeah, I zeroed in on this one earlier too. I, I couldn't, I couldn't tell if I was making sense because of the belief operator thing, but it seems like the entailment there is going to be believing not P, not believing P. Um. Maybe I've written it out differently to how it was up there then. I mean, okay, let's just, before we move back up to that, the, what I just wrote there, even though it's not that the guy believes a contradiction as such, he believes a set of propositions which are inconsistent, right? Right, but I'm In that to, case, I just Yeah, obviously, there. obviously, if he believes P, right, then, then he's believing a set of propositions that are inconsistent, but I... Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, cool. So I, I just wanted to make original sure argument. Thing. Belief, right? But I thought in the original argument he wouldn't believe him. I mean, it would just be absurd, right? Then he would be a theist. Oh, I thought, but I thought belief he would just mean that he believed God too. Well, it might be that I just I um, confused myself and I said the wrong thing. You might you might be right that, that I was yeah I, that I was wrong. <laughs> I think um, for driving contradiction it has to be some sort of like some second order belief, like a belief about a belief. Every time that a power when Alex makes minor, like little tiny written errors, it's very important to shame him for it and tell him he got pwned and wrecked. <laughs> it's true. I get pwned all the time. Just destroyed. You don't want to make him rage quit. He's a powder tin. So <laughs> it's very true. easy to get him. That's true. Yeah, I mean, I heard him screaming at some guy about non inferential justification a few weeks ago. Did you? No, I'm I'm, I'm joking. That was, that was Jack. So what Darcy oh, to right was that the argument shows that if somebody's an agnostic, God doesn't exist. Right? That would be a real simple distillation, I would think. But he's making a different claim, right? Which is that agnosticism entails a contradiction, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what he hasn't shown. Yeah, he's just shown that it entails the falsity of the God that, as he defines it, yeah. Well, he, he does it in virtue of, he says, well, God has claimed, God has revealed that if he's, he's made it known to us. It's in virtue of that claim. That's why I have such a problem with the first premise that was presented because it, it's not in virtue of the argument itself it's a, it he ties the claim to the argument well well no he's the you got to be careful there because that's not a claim you can fight like oh i don't think there's a god and i don't think he revealed that he's just saying if this god exists then everyone knows it so you can't you can't fight back against a conditional by being like but god doesn't exist right 
Yeah, I'm not trying to fight back against that. I'm just saying he says if you say you don't know, then that contradicts God's claim. So therefore, you think God doesn't exist. And I think that's a I don't think you can connect, you can connect those two to come to that conclusion. I mean, I might just be stupid. I just find it so hard to track sentences like that without writing them out uh, formally. It's just so much you know, you don't know. This is true. This is false. I can't even process that. That that's what um. That's what we were saying was the leap that Darth was making, because it doesn't follow that you know that God doesn't exist. It just follows that God doesn't exist. Unless yeah. he wants to make the further move that you know all the entailments of your beliefs yeah, and you believe did. P1 and P2. Yeah, but he disavowed that when... Yeah, you're right, of course. ...about how silly that was. Mm -hmm. The math example was very nice. Right. So he actually has to retract his claim that it entails a contradiction. Well, <laughs> I, I don't know if that's going to happen anytime soon. Yeah, but the point is, he, he hasn't been able to show that it entails a contradiction. I mean, I know I've been saying this for weeks. I mean, I guess you've probably been saying it for years, but yeah. The, he, he certainly can't. All he does is he gives this modus tollens, then equivocates between the conclusion that God doesn't exist and the proposition that you know that he doesn't exist. Yeah, then the irony is that it's actually um, a refutation of his version of Christianity. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this, the funny thing is that the conclusion of that argument is just that his version of Christianity is false. He doesn't even get to a contradiction. He just destroys his own position. It's a it's a philosophical nuclear bomb, as you would say. Yeah, that's a very embarrassing outcome.